and I'd like to play a clip showing that the president found the people he needed to perpetuate his claims of fraud. They saw a big truck bringing in 100,000 ballots in garbage cans, in waste paper baskets, in cardboard boxes, and in shopping baskets. And every single one of them was for Biden because they were being notified by Smartmatic in Frankfurt that Biden was way behind and they better come up with a lot more ballots and we can prove every single thing I just said. And then on November 29th, he appeared on Maria Bartiromo's show, uh, Sunday Futures, I believe it was, and he said that the department was missing in action. Well, no, we had glitches where they moved thousands of votes from my account to Biden's account, and these are glitches. So they're not glitches, they're theft, they're fraud, absolute fraud. This election was over, and then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps. Uh, in Michigan and Pennsylvania and uh, uh, all over. Uh, how the FBI and Department of Justice, I don't know, maybe they're involved, but how people are allowed to get away from this stuff, with this stuff is unbelievable. For the red mirage as the debate was being carried out. The Fox News decision desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get for the Biden campaign. Arizona's called. Do you remember that? I do. What do you remember happening uh, where you were when Arizona was called? Um, I, uh, there was a surprise at the call. It's not very compelling because these depositions are obviously edited. There's already a complaint about the first day of the hearing when they quoted Donald Trump in his in his rally speech uh, telling people they should march on the Capitol, but cut out his statement uh, that they should do so peacefully. A number of Democrats who did that. There were dozens of Democrats who refused to go to his inauguration, and they spent the next four years claiming that he was an illegitimate president who was elected by Russia, and then Congresswomen like Maxine Waters told uh, her supporters and, and Democrats across the country that they needed to get up in the faces of Trump supporters and of Trump cabinet members. And so, Marie, one of the things that some of the uh, Republicans had said last week, including Kevin McCarthy, for example, was that there had not been any primetime hearings on inflation or on the surging crime problem across America. Well, I think the effectiveness has already been reduced because of the lack of bipartisanship that's been much talked about. I, I just think this really underscores what a blunder it was for Speaker Pelosi to make this a one-sided hearing. It, listening to and watching this one-sided uh, show, quite literally show that's been produced for television uh, play out really is astonishing in terms of the norms that have been broken here. And if you take away what President Trump said about the election, what it being stolen, what Rudy Giuliani was saying, there are actually legitimate questions that people have about the electoral process. You know when. If you ask Democrats about the hearing on Thursday night, many told me point blank it was effective and they watched. And I spoke to a lot of people I would consider Republicans and they frankly did not watch. They said that one of the things they were looking at were the fundraising efforts mm -hmm. uh, that were all taking place in the middle of all of this. $250 million was what the inspector at the Justice Department said was raised during this effort. Uh, that's also going to be something you hear about on Wednesday's hearing. No doubt. Uh, there was an enormous fundraising effort that was built off the back of this. I think anybody who pays attention to politics knows that uh, that's really not that surprising. Um, there was also an enormous fundraising uh, campaign that went off the back of Russia collusion as well. No that's, that's the way politics mm -hmm. works now. You've seen all the substance, but I think that what you're hearing from the two lawyers in particular are saying that it just doesn't feel like the process is fair or right or legitimate in this setting. Well, look, we can have debates about the process, and I think the Republicans tried to put people like Jim Jordan onto the committee, and Jim Jordan is involved in January 6th. He's involved in this story. You cannot put someone on a jury uh, or as a defense prosecutor, to use Andy's language, that is involved in the possible crime. In hindsight, would Republicans have been smarter to accept an independent investigation? The system actually worked to some extent, but it depends who you're trying to convict. And I think that so far they're trying to convict Donald Trump of being a terrible person. Uh, thanks. To